guys deserve a hand because you, you know, this is an ungodly hour, okay? This, this is Las Vegas. Anybody gets up at 8 o'clock. Most people go to bed around this time. Um, I, want, I just want to tell you a couple things before we start here. First of all, uh, this is the first time for me also, but it's being videotaped. And by uh, uh, prior arrangement uh, with the lawyers of Howard Hughes and everything, it's only going to go for the first 15 slides and everything, OK, uh, because of some other things. But I, I do want to, this reminded me, though, that I don't remember how many of you attended the first convention when we had the, we hired a firm to videotape uh, our convention. And I'll never forget, they came into the convention, and they had little bright lights on and stuff. And I believe, yes, it was run by three blondes, two of which couldn't figure out which end of the camera to point at you. One was named Bubbles, and yeah. <laughs> Uh, this, is, this is an honest, I, do I tell lies? But I'll never forget that because they came up to me and said, sir, would, would you like to, to be videotaped for this? And, uh, and before they started, they would hand you a card, okay, saying, and you can get your proofs and everything up at this room at this hour, okay? <laughs> and I mean, they didn't print that it was $100 uh, per minute or anything, you know? The very funny thing, though, was the next day, uh, I'm not going to mention names, and that's the reason why I wouldn't let a lot of this stuff be videotaped. There was a dealer. I was coming back into the Aladdin, and he was coming out with uh, uh, bubbles. <laughs> and I ran into him, and there's this, there's this very em embarrassing social moment, you know, where it's just awkward. And he said, D -d Doug, uh, uh, I'd like you to meet my niece. Yeah. <laughs> So in any case, that, that's the recollections I do have of a videotaping thing. I'm sure that we don't have bubbles here today, OK? Prior to this first slide coming up, uh, the one question I never get asked, OK, is, is uh, I guess, what would be the, the, the best chip or, the, or the, the most significant chip or the most historic chip? And believe it or not, I think uh, somewhat, a lot of you were going to be surprised at this first chip that comes up here, OK? Because I believe that if I had to hold in my hand and just really cherish one particular chip, uh, it would be this particular item. And you might show it, Dick. OK, uh, some of you are very familiar and some of you are not, OK? Uh, the reason why I feel that this is a historic chip, and very significant, obviously, is that this is a chip that was owned by Napoleon. And I believe that, yes, for all of our Bugsies and our, our beautiful uh, Sands chips and everything, this is much more significant to me, OK? Everybody in the world could probably mention Napoleon, OK? Um, so what you have here, and, and it, it does have a lot of meaning. Because if you look at it, uh, it's made of, I believe, a composition of mother of pearl and, and tortoise shell, and uh, it, it, it does have color to it and everything. Um, if you ha ask Dale Seymour, he is inside there and setting up, but he has, I believe, four or five of these at one time in his collection, OK? Um, but the significance of the bee, that was a logo that, that not only knows in Napoleon's personal possessions, but it, that B is a symbol of good luck, OK? And now, if you, if you go through the, the history of gaming alone, what is the most famous card manufacturer <laughs> of all time? It's the B cards. And that's where they, they start, and that's where this, this, this is very significant, OK? And this B image also goes on, obviously, into ivories and, and some uh, generic clays. Um, it, it's just a good luck symbol from the old days. But if I were asked what chip would I like to hold, it would be this one, OK? Next slide. Again, very, very significant chips has nothing to do with the gaming in this state. These chips were manufactured by T.R. King, which is the manufacturer. And outside, now, for those of you unfamiliar with molds, the mold is what you'll see as the di design on the outside circumference rim. That, that mold there is, is made of a, uh, some small crowns, King's crowns. These chips here were manufactured, I believe, in 1951. I, the date will be around that time. 
I remember finding these chips. These chips were found in junk boxes, bargain boxes, when I first started. And they were so neat to, to look at. But to find out that they had significance and that that's the presidential seal, and then going back through records of T.R. King and finding out that this particular chip was sent to the Lockheed Manufacturing Company in like the very early 1950s, and then tracing down an engineer who actually worked on it and told us that this was sent over for a special plane being built, and it was the president's plane, President Ike's plane, Eisenhower's. This is before the plane becomes known as Air Force One. I think these are significant, significant chips, and they were at the time bought for a, a, a possibly a dollar each in the junk box. Next, please. Uh, this, uh, your heads, it's kind of hard to make out this particular shot. Uh, I did show this shot at the uh, Las Vegas chapter the other day, but this, this is my first chip dealer's inventory. His name was Jim Reynolds. Everybody called him Old Jim back then, and he lived in Tucson. And again, that impression I have when you're first into this and you're seeing chips for the first time, I was astounded because this, this goes almost like this whole wall back behind me. This is just a portion of it. This is in one man's inventory, okay? And he would have these tubes and everything. To this day, it's kind of like uh, when you see somebody like Dale Seymour's, which is a, a massive mound of chips. It's, it's awesome, okay? But old Jim had, had uh, little tricks and devices that I still remember to this day, and one being the famous toilet paper tubes, in that he would, he would send you chips, and because, you, he would just stuff them into old toilet paper tubes. It's just the right size for chips, okay? And I'll never forget old Jim did send me at one time through the mail, usually after he put them in the tubes, they would go into a box, the box would get wrapped. But he did send me one time the, the actual tube with my name on the outside. <laughs> Amazing to me, okay? But that, that, was, that was old Jim. Um, uh, he's gone away now, but uh, he was one I re remember from and learned from. Next, please. Uh, th there's other fascinating things. Sometimes a little paper document just changes everything for me, okay? Uh, you're all familiar with Harrah's, all right? Bill Harrah uh, starts off with uh, gaming, bingo games out of uh, Santa Monica, California, and he, and he moves on to the, the Tahoe and the Reno areas and stuff. But finding this little bingo card is very, very significant, only because of it says Harris, Bingo, and then a city called Fallon. And we have no records, again, of Bill Hera owning anything in Fallon, okay? That's what I was talking about earlier, where knowledge in, in this hobby, we, I don't think we've uncovered more than 10% of true ownerships of things, at, at least even in the state of Nevada. If you consider all the U.S., we haven't scratched the surface. And it's little items like this that are significant because it may have been the only paper document to show that Bill Hera had something to do in the city of Fallon. Next. Uh, I, this, <laughs> this, some of the most significant places are, are little places in Las Vegas, okay? This is a place called uh, Cal's. Uh, this, uh, Cal's Gin Mill. What you see here is a that's a former grocery store, okay, when he bought that and converted it into a casino. These are the types of casinos, actually, that you should try and visit today, the very small ones in Las Vegas. You see the strip ones. I don't think they're going to tear down the Bellagio tomorrow, okay? I think you have a very good chance of something like the pot of gold in Henderson, going in Elistra, uh, Ligori's. These are the small little places that you should see first as a chip collector before they disappear, okay? To say that you were in. And a significant item here is that up at the top uh, of the building was the sign that Calvin had for his place, which is also duplicated on the chips. And that's why we know that that is from Cal's Gin Mill in North Las Vegas. Next. Uh, this is, a, this is the, the grand opening, obviously, of the Excalibur, and I've already told this story uh, two couple nights ago, but um, I thought it was significant to myself only because back in the old days, and I know there were three other instances of this, uh, when a casino would open and they had it on the drawing boards, there would be no name for the casino yet. And 
since this is owned by Circus Circus, I was on their mailing list for a lot of things, okay, being a, a, a gambler. Uh, and so I got a thing in the mail that said, name the casino contest. Okay, and they gave you the theme and the motif, which was King Arthur's Court, et cetera, et cetera. And whoever could get it in early, et cetera, would get like a free week's vacation at this new operation. And I knew I had the winner. I, I knew I had the winner, okay. I immediately sent back Camelot. Right? Come on. Don't you the Camelot. You just, you get, I mean, wouldn't you rather stay at Camelot than something called with a sword? I mean, you know, no, nah, they pick Excalibur. And, and uh, uh, the significant date also for a lot of old timers is that particular date is the day that uh, uh, Star Warwick passed away, who was, who was married to a famous, famous chip dealer, okay? Um, also, uh, one thing about grand openings, again, I, and I know I've already told other people this, when you have a grand opening at a casino, and I know you're all chip collectors, okay, the first thing you do when you run in there, and I'm talking about the very first 10 minutes, okay, you do not go in there and get a chip. The chips will always be there. You're going to find an uncirculated, don't get a token. The only thing you do is you run immediately to the keynote parlor because you're gonna go there and whether you buy one or a hundred, you're gonna play Kino on that very first game because, right, it's going to have a time and a date stamp. That is proof that you were there for game number one of this particular place and I do have I have, since that time, obviously, there's been at least six grand openings, and I have my little diggers run in there and just get dollar kino tickets, okay? So while I'm sitting on these stacks of tickets that, you know, someday my son Doug's just going to throw away, thinking, geez, Dad, what a bad player, okay? So, <laughs> next, next, please. Um, another significant chip, because a lot of people think that, uh, that these people from Las Vegas, they, had their, they came here uh, and they started these businesses, but this is, a, this is a chip that shows that, no, this is, some, uh, this is a chip order for a man named Dick Chartrand. Dick Chartrand came from Fresno. This chip was ordered by him in about the early 50s. Later on, of course, Dick Chartrand goes up to the lake and opens a place called Barney's. But it shows that he had some sort of history prior to coming to Nevada, in which almost every one of those old timers in the 50s and 60s had priors. A lot of priors, okay? <laughs> Next, please. Uh, again, Doc, very, very simple chip. Uh, and the lineage of this particular piece, we can trace back to the records of T.R. King and Company because of its mold, its mold being the four large crowns now on the rim. Uh, this particular chip was ordered for H.G. Uh, Bartlett, Doc Bartlett, and I believe this chip goes into Wyoming. And again, Wyoming is a place that had a lot of illegal gaming, but I believe we only have like 18 chips total that came from that state. Uh, it, but anyway, Doc Bartlett ordered this chip, and with the next slide, it's tied into the Fortune Club. This is Cecil Lynch's Fortune Club, which was downtown. This is the kind of place that I wish I had been in at least one time. Okay, I'm sure that's, it, it's hokey looking in a lot of ways. I'm sure that's plyboard up there, but they, these are the kinds of casinos that people actually played in in the 50s and 60s, okay? Um, anyway, Cecil Lynch is the name atop the, uh, the slot machine there, and it says Cecil Lynch, Cecil Lynch is a fortune club. Uh, the prior chip with Doc Bartlett, he was a partner and who also ran games at Cecil Lynch's Fortune Club. At that particular time, a lot of owners leased out the blackjack tables or space for this, and it would be chips that didn't say anything like Fortune Club, it would be that particular operator's chips. So this is a fascinating part of, the, of Las Vegas history in that a lot of chips don't necessarily have a name of casinos on them, but they are true, authentic chips. Next. Uh, th this, is a, this is a dear old friend of mine. He's now passed away. His name is Willie Capucci. Uh, this takes place in Fallon, and I love this particular shot because this is my opening shot when I go up to Fallon and I want to meet Willie. He used to own a place called the Esquire Club. Uh, Willie loved animals. Willie, this, what he's doing there is he's feeding ducks in his own pond. 
And I, this is my opening shot, and I, I love this shot because right after this, I'm walking through water. Uh, there's just, a, it's a mess. There's duck crap all over. It's on my shoes. <laughs> and I go up there, and then there's, I say, Willie, and he turns to me and goes, I'll be right back. Look, can, can you just unload my truck? <laughs> And I said, well, Willie, you know, and he goes, no, 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 I do it. I've got, I've got stuff for you in the house. I'm starting to, you know, I'm feeding those ducks, baby. Oh, am I feeding? I unload that whole thing. And, you know, out of the corner of my eye, I see him in the window watching. <laughs> the, the, go to the next shot, please. With Willie, this is the reason why. Willie is a pack rat. This is just one section of his two-acre place. It was just loaded with all kinds of memorabilia. He collected signs. He had this. I spent approximately one day with Willie, and we didn't come across a single chip. But his ducks got fed, didn't they? <laughs> Next. Um, I, I, again, I like, I, this is kind of a favorite shot of mine. Uh, this remnants of this place you can still see today. It's Kitty Corner from the Sahara, okay? In fact, they, re, they reopened the place called Honest John's. There was a bar. But uh, the reason why I brought this shot is a lot of people have Honest John's chips or memorabilia from it, and they think it comes from this particular place. But with the next shot, I think... Uh, there's another also, there was also another Honest John's, and this actually was much more famous in this town for locals because this is downtown. This is what becomes later on known as the Lady Luck. This is the, what the property, the, this particular Honest John's was on the property now known as the Lady Luck. This was also owned by um, Art Grant, and he's also very famous because he's on the Thunderbird host chips. And Phil Jensen used to come in this place and drink beer for 25 cents or whatever at the time. And he said that there were little bowls that old Thunderbird chips used to be in, and they were being used as drink tokes. Okay, next. Back to the old uh, Honest John's. Now you have a place next door to Honest John's what's called the Centerfold. And these kind of places don't exist any longer. These were strip joints. These were, were hurly-burly burlesque type of things were going on, okay? And they usually had one table game. They were only licensed for one table game. Uh, Phil Jensen, if he's ever walking around, I believe I have a shot later on of Phil Jensen. He was one of the few to have the privilege of going to all the strip joints, okay? <laughs> to get chips, or under the guise of getting chips, okay? But th those days are long gone. They, they, the, reg the regulations today, either Clark County Records or, or uh, the state of ga uh, gaming regulations forbid that. So, centerfold chips, sneak joint chips, um, uh, uh, some other places in town here, and some of the places in Reno, to me, they're, they're fantastic chips because they, they come from an era where other things are going on. Next. That was 15. That was 15. Cut. 